today's passage, we finish up our walk through the book of James. We're in James chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. And in this passage, James says a whole bunch. In fact, we could do 20 devotionals and 10 sermons just from these few verses. But in it, James primarily talks about prayer. And there's three different prayers that he talks about. And so let's read the verses and then we can break it down. James 5.13 says this. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is any among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make them well. The Lord will raise them up. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And then James goes on to give the example of Elijah, saying he was a human being, even as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain in the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if some of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring them back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the way of error will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. So like I said, there's so much in this passage. But the three main points I want to bring out are the three different types of prayers that we see in this passage. First off, James talks about anybody who's in trouble. If anyone's in trouble, let them pray. That's what James says. So there's the individual prayer. If I'm in trouble, I should pray. If you're in trouble, you should pray. And it makes me think, how often when we are in trouble, is it our first response to immediately pray? Or do we go talk to someone? Or do we try and escape from the trouble? Or do we try and figure things out on our own? And then when it gets bad enough, maybe then we pray. But James is very clear. If anyone is in trouble, let them pray. So individual prayer. Then he goes on to talk about anybody who is sick, that they should have the elders come and anoint them and pray for healing. And this is where uh, the passage has quite a bit of controversy because here some people think that the sickness is relating only to physical sickness and others think it's actually a spiritual sickness or a sin sickness. I think either way, uh, this passage works in terms of when you are at such a place that you desire people in spiritual authority who you feel like have great faith to come and pray for you, then, then that is a wonderful thing to do, to have them come and pray. When your faith may be at its lowest or weakest, to have those that you um, have in your life that are spiritual mentors or pastors or elders or Bible study leaders, whomever, to come and pray over you, that their faith, their prayers of faith, may heal you. It's a beautiful thing. So there's a, if you're sick, have people come and pray, lay hands on you, and then there'll be the prayer of faith to bring healing. And then thirdly, it talks about praying for one another as you confess sin. And this is such a powerful prayer too, because here is now the power of sin being broken. As I confess to another, the power of the secret sin goes away. And often the person that I am most afraid to tell about my sin is probably the person I need to tell about my sin in order to break that power. And so in that, then we can pray for one another to bring about healing. So three kinds of prayers. One, when I'm in trouble, individual prayer, God help me. Two, when I am sick, whether it's physical sickness or a spiritual sickness, I'm, I'm calling on others and I'm calling on their faith to pray for healing for me and to lay hands on me that God might do a work in me. And then thirdly, when I'm struggling with sin, if I confess that sin to a trusted other and they confess their sins to me, then we can pray for each other and then be healed of that sin. Okay, so that was a lot, but I want to leave you with one quick example. Uh, Tony Campolo is a speaker that used to speak a lot in Christian circles back in the 80s and 90s. And there's this very cool example that I think helps us in this passage today. He was speaking at a conference in Oregon, and after he got done, a couple came up to him, and they were asking for prayer because the husband had cancer and he was about to die. And so Tony placed his hands on the husband and prayed that God would heal him. Okay, And then a week later, he gets a call from the wife. And this is what she said. She goes, 
um, hi, you prayed for my husband. He had cancer. And so Tony, Tony immediately thinks, oh my gosh, yes, he was healed because she said he had cancer. And she said he died. And then Tony was like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. But she continued. She said, don't feel bad. When he came into that church that Sunday, he was filled with anger. He knew he was going to be dead in a short period of time, and he hated God. He was 58 years old, and he wanted to see his children and grandchildren grow up. He was angry that this all-powerful God didn't take away his sickness and heal him. He would lie in bed and curse God. The more his anger grew towards God, the more miserable he was to everybody around him. It was an awful thing to be in his presence, she said. But then she told him this. After you prayed for him, a peace had come over him and a joy had come into him. Tony, she said, the last three days have been the best days of our lives. We've sung, we've laughed, we've read scripture, we've prayed. Oh, they've been wonderful days. And I call to thank you for laying ha your hands on him and praying for healing. And then she said something incredibly profound. She said he wasn't cured, but he was healed. And so a prayer of faith can do such marvelous and miraculous works. Do you think God can go beyond your theological box and do immeasurably more than we can even think or dream or imagine? I think so. And so as we pray for ourselves, as we pray for others, as we confess to one another, that God would be amongst those prayers of faith, that he would be allowed to do whatever he wants to do because we don't limit him by our small prayers, by our protective prayers. Sometimes I think we're so concerned about God's reputation that we don't want to pray these big, bold, audacious prayers. But let, us, let me remind you, God's reputation, he can handle for himself, okay? And so... In the passage, it talks about Elijah, Elijah, who was a man just like us, who prayed fervently and for three years didn't rain. And then three years later, he prayed and it rained again. And he prayed with expectancy. And in 1 Kings 18, it talks about he sent out his servant and six times that servant went out to see if the rain cloud was coming. No rain had been there for three years. And six times he says, go check to see if there's any rain clouds. Go check to see. And on the seventh time, the servant says, I see in the distance a rain cloud the size of a fist of a man. And Elijah knew then that his prayer had been answered. So when we pray, we pray with expectancy and we pray with attention, looking to see when and how and where God is going to answer our prayers. So let's take a moment to pray and let us ask God to help us in our prayer lives, that we would improve our prayer lives, that we might know him more. So let's pray. God, I thank you so much for this passage. There is so much in it. But God, I pray, first of all, that you would remind us that when we're in trouble, immediately we pray to you. When we are lacking in faith, when we are sick, whether it's a physical sickness or a spiritual sickness, that we would call on the faith of others to pray for us bold prayers. And then when we are struggling with sin, that we would confess to one another and that we would find healing there through each other's prayers. And God, may we expect great things. May we pray bold prayers, believing that you can do far beyond anything we can dream or imagine. We love you, God. Help us with this. Teach us how to pray, God, and guide us in all these things. In Jesus' name, amen.